Welcome back to Therapy Thursday. Click here for a link to last week's blog on iliotibial band compression syndrome and why it's a compression syndrome and not a friction syndrome. This week's blog is going to focus on exercises that you can do to try to relieve the symptoms of IT band syndrome. Now, there's a number of reasons that point to the hip on why these are going to help alleviate the pain associated with this disorder. This line of research actually started back in 2000 by a gentleman named Fredrickson that showed that people with IT band syndrome tend to have weakness in their hip abductors or the muscles on the outside of their body. The research that we presented last week also showed that there tends to be some tissue down by your knee that when irritated or compressed by the IT band sends a signal back up to your hip abductors to contract essentially to pull your IT band away from that tissue. Now, the reason that people with IT band syndrome get pain from that tends to be, or at least you can guess, is from a weakness of those hip abductors while they're running that doesn't allow them to pull that away. Now, interestingly, there's a number of factors that point to the hip. First one is hip adduction. So this has been shown a few times in the research to, to increase the strain on the IT band. Adduction is moving in towards the midline. The second is internal rotation. So turning your actual foot in internally towards the center part of your body. Those two factors combine for uh, predictive ability, at least in one paper, of people that are going to get IT band syndrome. What we're going to do is focus on exercises that are the two opposite motions. Abduction away from the midline and external rotation, not internal rotation. So follow this exercise progression and help alleviate your own pain associated with IT band syndrome. We're going to present a recent paper by Selkowitz with a five exercise series meant to target the gluteal group, which is responsible for abduction and external rotation, and not the TFL group, which is responsible partly for internal rotation. Our first exercise is a clamshell against resistance seen here. Our second exercise we modified slightly from the original paper. In that paper, the TheraBand was tied around the individual's thighs. However, a recent article by a former CMCC grad named Ed Cambridge showed that the closer you tie the resistance band to the forefoot, the more it activates the gluteal group and less the TFL, which is important for what we're trying to present. Our third exercise is a single leg bridge seen here. With this exercise, Sean is going to try to squeeze his gluteal group on the way up, drive from the bottom heel straight up towards the ceiling. Our fourth and fifth exercises are very similar. This fourth exercise is a quadruped extension with the leg straight. The only difference between this exercise and the fifth exercise is in this exercise, the knee will be bent. So the cue we're going to use is trying to bend at the knee and drive that heel straight up towards the ceiling. We're also going to present a sixth exercise that wasn't part of the Suckowitz paper. This is another adaptation from the Cambridge article called the Sumo or Monster Walk. The only difference between this and the sidestep is now he's moving forward.